Now I'm glad that Craig let us borrow this launcher here, the Spikes Tactical thing. Someone said that the Spikes Tactical logo looks like two of something, and once you see it, you can't unsee it. I'm having trouble. Ooh, Ooh I see it now. This video is brought to you by Global Ordnance. Go check them out at www.globalordnance.com. Howdy folks, welcome to another video here at Ordnance Lab. This right here started as kind of an impulsive thing, like, well, a lot of our videos start with our friend Craig in Florida, by the way, Tactical Griffin there on Instagram. Make sure to give him a like. He had this Spikes Havoc launcher um, there, and we were like, hey dude, can I borrow that for a video? He's like, hell yeah. So what we did is we brought it out here. We're gonna compare it to a couple of different things. I've, like, I don't mean anything against the Spikes um, launcher. It just seems to be designed for like toys, for like, hey, you know, screwing around with your bat in your backyard, launching off. It says on here to only use flare, smoke, or gas rounds. And again, this seems more like a toy. And with 37 millimeter launchers, the way that it works is that unlike a 40 millimeter launcher, which by being a 40 millimeter, it's an ATF views it as intrinsically as a weapon. And what happens with the 40 millimeter launcher, it also has a rifled barrel because it's designed to use a weapon around that interfaces with the rifling system to be more precise. For the 37 millimeters, they are almost exclusively smoothbore. There's a few niche items that are barreled and rifled in 37 millimeter, but we won't get into that stuff. And what happens is that with ATF's view is they view this right here as a signaling device and that where you can own it it's not even considered a firearm unless you have it in conjunction with anti-personnel ammunition. ATF actually issued a ruling where they said that when the weapon is had and used with anti-personnel ammunition, such as we have right here, which is a ballistic beanbag round, that right there turns the weapon into a destructive device. And at that point, it has to be registered with the ATF. Now, if you're a private citizen and you have one of these Havoc launchers, you wanna turn it into a DD, that you can do that via an ATF Form 1. You just file it on there. It's just like making a short barrel rifle or short barrel shotgun or doing a Form one can and the issue with that though is that then you're limited to just 37 millimeter rounds and so you'd only be able to get rounds to this right here that don't engage with the rifling system unlike where you have things like the 40 millimeter launcher here which is from ALS this right here was funny we posted a picture of this and someone was like that ain't no real gun and it's like, well, yeah, it actually is a real firearm. What we did is this right here for our law enforcement customers, we were doing a lot of law enforcement sales. The thing is, is if you're walking around with this right here, it comes from the factory in black, and you're walking around with that open carrying it, oh my God, it looks like a grenade launcher there. That does not look good on YouTube. But if you come out here with an orange thing like this, everyone's gonna know that you have a less lethal weapon on there, both if you're gonna be using it where, hey, like a crowd control situation where you're doing a show of force, or if you're gonna be using it like the classic, you know, you always see the video with the guy with a knife and all the cops around him pointing guns at each other in a big circle. Well, whenever you're gonna be employing less lethal, the noise on that is actually it's the same as an actual lethal round. It's been instances where you get sympathetic gunfire where one guy lights off a round and everyone else starts shooting. And so the goal with this right here is that whenever you employ it, you're getting ready to use it. Everyone around you is gonna know that, hey, less lethal is being employed and hopefully you don't get into that situation of sympathetic gunfire. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, again, we're gonna go out there, we'll shoot some rounds here through the Havoc, we'll shoot some rounds here through the ALS launcher, and then also through an M203 40 millimeter grenade launcher, and we'll just see how they compare. This isn't something where we have a whole, oh, got a tractor used over here to block the wind so we send a bunch of crap over here. Good times out here at the ranch. So anyways, let's start, stop talking and get started shooting. So first up's gonna be a white smoke round. First of all, I hate wearing battle rattle normally. Yeah, we're not gonna take any risks on that. So I'm rocking our armored mobility plates and Kevlar iPro and all that good stuff. I'm not gonna put my hand near the breech whenever we fire it, but let's see what happens. All right, well, that went a little bit further than I expected. It went off into the grass and with as much wind as we've got, wanna make sure we didn't get a fire. So you got to see me run down range and quickly make sure it wasn't burning. But luckily that was just literally the smoke from the smoke round. 
And what it is for these rounds is it's a container like this. It just goes flying out and burns for about 30, 40 seconds, but it's extremely hot whenever it burns. You have to be really careful about the fire hazard. So let's go out there and try some other rounds. Well, we got blown out yesterday by the wind. We weren't able to keep on filming, so we're on day two of this video. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go and launch off a CS multi-projectile round. What this right here will do, well, hopefully it ignites when it comes out, is it's gonna send three burning projectiles out there to burn and create a cloud of CS. This right here is really good for having an area saturation. Now, one thing you wanna make sure whenever you're dealing with CS is that if you have some, you may have some coworkers that are overly sensitive to even the, the even seeing CS smoke, much less being exposed to it. So make sure that you have everyone aware of what's going on and making sure that no overly sensitive people are on the range that could get their feelings hurt and they're gonna start crying and whatnot. They're gonna cry so bad that it's not even from the CS, they're just gonna cry from being traumatized about it. Here at Ordnance Lab, we wanna make sure that we take care of our coworkers. So Jake just asked me if I wanted the gas mask. I'm like, nah, bruh, I'm good. The wind's coming right out of here. We're gonna be firing over here. So um, you may get to see a little bit of jackass. So let's see what happens. So that actually went a little bit further than expected. Went over here into the tree line. Luckily it didn't start a fire. Um, but here you can see the actual projectiles that it sends out. It sent out three of those and it's designed to burn. It burns shorter than for like a single projectile, but it gives you a better area spread and I can still taste it a little bit and it's still hot. So you wanna make sure you don't pick these up after firing it. So let's move on to the next round. So next up is going to be a powderized CS muzzle blast. What this right here does has a 38 SNW blank in here that's going to send out a charge of CS powder and it's not actually visible whenever you fire it. So it's something that you could fire off and folks won't really know what's going on until it starts affecting them. And one of these things with chemical weapons, you always want to make sure that you're aware of where the wind is because um, as anyone who's ever done any NBC type stuff, that chemical weapons work as well on you as they do the enemy. So with this, what we're going to do is we're going to fire it downwind and hopefully not get a whole bunch of it in our face and we'll see what happens. All right, scan of the area for overly sensitive co-workers. Area's clear. All right. All right, so here's the empty round. I can taste a little bit of the CS and I wasn't even able to see much of the uh, powderized form going out there. So it's something you can fire off and folks won't even know what's going on until it starts affecting them. And so far this uh, spikes has held up pretty well. So we didn't need to be wearing all of our battle rattle when we're firing things through it. This is our bro. This is Mario. Mario has obviously seen better days. We used this right here for a video a few months ago that hasn't, well, we're not quite sure what's happened with it, but um, we did a grenade in his hand. Good luck, Mario. We hit him with a claymore. Fire in the hole. And a whole bunch of stuff. We're actually really impressed with how well these targets work. We'll hopefully be doing a video where we do an evaluation on them against a bunch more explosive stuff, but that'll be coming up. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using Mario right now to actually shoot him with a bunch of less lethal rounds. Now, with the rounds that we've fired through the weapon so far, that it has not actually been a destructive device because what we're doing is we're firing gas rounds and we fired like a, the CS, that right there is not gonna be considered an anti-personnel, it's just a chemical agent you're distributing. But what we're doing is now we're gonna be shooting the 60 cal rubber balls through it. This right here is definitely an anti-personnel round. And we're also gonna be firing, uh, well, do this while looking cool here. Um, also a rubber, I'm sorry, a ballistic bag. This right here is basically a massive bean bag. And these right here are definitely the anti-personnel rounds that make the weapon into a destructive device. Now, the weapon actually does not have any sort of serial numbers on it because it doesn't start off as a firearm. Now, if you were to form one one of these, you would have to give it a serial number. But for us, since we're doing this right here on our licensed location, we are technically manufacturing a destructive device. But since it's going to be no longer a destructive device by the end of the day, there's no reason for us to register it and engrave it. One of the advantages of being a destructive device manufacturer. Now, let's get on to seeing how well this works for shooting Mario. Uh. Got him. Uh. 
was kind of funny whenever I was shooting this, I was looking like trying to use the sights or well, point it in the right direction. It looked like that thing where Anderson Cooper went shooting with the AR and was like that. It looked totally cringe, I'm sure, on the video. But I forgot to put on my Ear Pro last time, and when we fired the CS round, that actually fires a real 38 Smith & Wesson blank, so it was not comfortable, so I had to put on my Ear Pro. And so again, it didn't look very cool on the internet. But, so talking about the rounds, the first round that we fired off is this bean bag. And what it is, it's a whole bunch of steel, or I'm sorry, lead shot that's in a bean bag configuration. It will hit you, and it packs quite a punch. The other one is these 60 round rubber balls. And this right here also packs a pretty good punch. And the 37 millimeter platform is actually really good for incapacitation where you can actually knock someone out of the fight instead of getting just pain compliance. And another thing that I gotta say is that the 37 millimeter, from, or the Havoc 37 millimeter launcher stood up. So me of little faith that was afraid it would blow up, it actually stood up to all of the actual real ammunition that we fired through it. So what we'll do now is we're gonna do a comparison with the 40 millimeter launchers and just kinda show you how what the difference is between them. But we've got, again, I was wrong about the, uh, the spikes tactical i still wouldn't recommend someone go out there and form one it when you can get a 40 millimeter we'll talk about that here in a minute but it stood up again to the real rounds we fired through it all right so next up is going to be the als 40 millimeter launcher now this right here is a 40 millimeter but you can fire the 37 millimeter rounds through a 40 millimeter without any issue we'll start off here with some white smoke rounds fire those off and see how it compares to the spikes So you can see that it's sitting there laying down a pretty good layer of smoke that you could use that either to obscure movement or you can use it if you're in a crowd control situation to fire off white smoke instead of CS and a lot of folks will just run away. You get some overly sensitive folks, even the thought of getting exposed to CS will send them running. Next up on the menu is gonna be a foam impact round. This is where the 40 millimeter really gets its chance to shine compared to the 37 millimeter, because a 40 millimeter round, such as this right here, engaged with the rifle in, and it makes it into a much more accurate platform. Your engagement envelope goes out to 50, even 75 meters, provided you have the weapon properly zeroed. So we'll see what this does to Mario. Bam! Now, I forgot to mention, this is actually a combination impact and marking round. It's got a die in there that will mark someone. So if you really want to say F you to someone, not only swacking them with a 40 millimeter impact round, but also cover it up with dust so you can identify them later. Um, this right here is definitely a bad day for him. You can also get these impact rounds from uh, ALS. They have some really neat ones that combine both the impact with an OC or a CS element. So whenever you hit someone, you not only get the oomph and then they're, <gasps> they're breathing this stuff and it is nasty. So now let's try one of the M781 chalk rounds through this thing. So next up is gonna be our M781 chalk round. A lot of folks think these right here are harmless rounds, that they're not gonna hurt you, but actually it travels at a really low velocity, but it has a zinc pusher in here that's actually very dangerous. Even if it's moving at, slow, at a low velocity, it can actually still cause extremely bad injuries or even kill someone. So we move our Mario out a little bit more, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna beam him with this round and we'll see what it does to him. And we also wanna show that with the ALS 40 millimeter launcher, it's able to chamber and fire the 40 by 46 millimeter rounds uh, effortlessly. You could fire an M433 HE round through this without any issue. Well, overshot the target. Let's try that again. Got him. Got him. So I was aiming for right here and I beamed him right here in the shoulder. So that M781 is not designed for being fired up close. At least that's my excuse. But that right there had a whole bunch more energy compared to the less lethal round that just bounced back. That right there actually knocked him down. So what we'll do now is we're gonna move on to the M203 40 millimeter grenade launcher. All right, well, here we have our M16A1 
our Tony Montana's My Little Friend recreation. Those of y'all that were at Big Daddy Unlimited's epic shoot this year may remember this was out there. Unfortunately, we couldn't shoot it because the Sons of Liberty Gun Works bolt carrier group failed and the weapon kept jamming, but then we replaced it with an LMT BCG and we've had zero problems. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire off one of these smoke rounds out of it. Now the, 30, the LMT, excuse me, the M203 is designed for a 40 by 46 millimeter cartridge. This is the M781 and the M433 HE rounds. And so what those do is they have a circular nose cone that's designed to just, you slip it in there and close it. But with the, LM, with the M203, it's got these little lips right here, which can catch on some of the rounds, especially these civilian type ones, such as these at the flat end. So whenever you're inserting them, you have to be a little bit careful so that you insert them like that so that you don't damage the barrel. But it's able to chamber and fire moats of the 37 millimeter rounds, that, or all the ones that we have and moats of the ones that are out there. Well, we had a failure to fire. This isn't the first time we've had it with these rounds. All right. Let's see if they're a second time go. All right. The ALS shoots high and this one shoots low. We'll try it again. Well, so we saw that I can't shoot the 203 up close for crap. I could I could hit stuff way the hell out there with the weapon, but when it gets close, I guess I'm like Buddy, where he sees like a fly across the room and then you put something right in front of him and he can't even notice it. But anyways, hopefully y'all found this video interesting. So the Spikes Tactical, the Havoc Launcher, it works with all the rounds. Uh, some folks, I, I refer to it as a toy launcher, not because I'm trying to, someone said, throw shade or whatever on them. It just seems like something that you use for, again, screwing off in your backyard but it is able to successfully chamber and fire the less lethal rounds in 37 millimeter. Now again, my recommendation would be not to form one, one of these, to go ahead and get yourself legit 40 millimeter ordnance instead of getting a toy, but that's just my personal opinion. And anyways, hopefully again, y'all found this video interesting. Um, Mario here didn't have quite as much fun as the rest of us. We've gonna probably do some more testing with Mario here with some booms and whatnot. He's already been through a lot and we'll traumatize him some more, but thanks again for watching and we'll see y'all next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, hit subscribe if you want to see more, and stay tuned for another episode here at Ordnance Lab.